Hello and welcome back to Chant Talk. I'm your host, Patrick Torso, and today on Chant Talk, we're not talking about Chant at all. Today we're going to have a look at hymn reharmonization using an example. The other day I just uploaded a sort of an arrangement of the hymn, Holy God We Praise Thy Name, kind of as, as I prepared it for uh, this past Sunday's Masses, which was the uh, 12th Sunday after Pentecost. So what we're going to do today is kind of take a look at what I did in reharmonizing the final verse of that and uh, hopefully give you some ideas. Now, before we go any farther with it, why don't we just have a listen to that final verse reharm right now. specifically I did there, let's talk about a couple of kind of broad ideas that, that are important to hymn reharmonization. First of all, what is it? Well, reharmonizing a hymn is all about keeping the melody exactly the same as it's written, but changing all of the kind of underlying chord structure, progression, harmonic ideas underneath, right? So we're just kind of giving a whole new texture, a whole new underlaying or foundation to the exact same melody. Now, uh, it does require some music theory knowledge to, to do that well, but just like I mentioned with improvisation uh, in, in a previous episode, the most important thing is to just do it. Practice it, play with it, experiment, don't be afraid to mess up, don't be afraid to sound bad, just play with different chords under the melody. But there are some, you know, kind of good ideas and tips and tricks of how to, how to hopefully do this effectively. But the first thing I want to point out is, I, I think it's something that Jacob Collier said, um, and of course, I, I'm not going to be able to remember exactly how he said it, but it was something along the lines of every note works with every chord. That seems a little bit crazy, but, but there's a lot of truth to that. It, a lot of it just simply depends on the function and, and, and the, the sound and the texture you're going for. But let's, let's look at an example. Let's, let's take just the, the note C natural as an example. What is it harmonically? C natural is the root of any C chord. It's the major second of a B flat chord. It's the minor third of an A minor chord. Major third of an, e, uh, an A flat major chord. It's the four, so like a great suspension uh, for a G major. Uh, it's the fifth of F major and F minor. Uh, it's the sixth of E flat. Um, it's the dominant seven of D major. It's the major seven of D flat, and I'm skipping a few of the more obscure usages in there, but that gives you the idea, right, that this one note, C, can play a whole lot of roles in a lot of different keys. Um, and it's a matter then of, of, like I said before, not being afraid to play with those chords underneath that note. So if C is, is a melody note you're trying to reharmonize, just play all those chords under it and see which one sounds the way you want it to sound, right? Um, and so, so that kind of leads to one of my primary methods for reharmonization, and that's what I call like choosing target notes or target sort of points in, in the melody. Um, and you might choose those based on points of kind of like climax, the, the height of, of a musical phrase, or maybe you're choosing it based on a point that's already got some tension and dissonance and you really want to heighten that. Uh, or maybe it's textual, maybe you read something, maybe the, the text of the verse that you're reharmonizing has a kind of a, a textual climax that you really want to highlight. And so you choose that point, whatever that note is in the melody, that's kind of going to be a focal point. There might be, there might be more than one in, in a single melody, but, but you choose those and then you kind of build your reharm 
for those as your starting points. Um, and then, you know, what you do is you use those the ideas I mentioned before about just playing with different chords under that, that target note until you pick the one you want. And then you kind of work your way backward from there. That's going to make sense when we take a look at Holy God, we praise thy name. But, you know, you end up doing things like, um, say, you've picked your target note. And let's say it's a C. And let's say you've chosen, because we'll have one of these in, the, uh, in Holy God. But let's say you've chosen to use it as the dominant seven of a D major chord. Well, then you have to figure out how do you get to D major if you're, you know, not if you're, the key of your song is not at all D major, right? Well, then you have to think about um, ways that can lead to D. Um, you can use the secondary dominant. So the A, you know, A is the dominant of D. And D is kind of like your new key for your mini um, modulation that you've done. So you can, if you can fit an A under the measure, let's say, leading up to the D, well, there you go. Then you kind of have to keep working backward from there. But I, I don't want to try to turn this into like a lecture on the music theory behind reharmonization. I want to treat this a little more like I treated the uh, chant accompaniment videos. Let's just get out to the organ. Let's go through, uh, I'll show you the target notes I chose and go through a little of the mental processes that I use to arrive at my final verse, reharmonization for Holy God, we praise thy name. Let's head to the organ. All right, guys, so as you can see, all that I have in front of me is just the melody written out. No chords, nothing here. So we're going to go through this. I'm going to show you the target notes that I chose, the chords I chose for those, and then how I kind of work my way backward from those to come up with something that, that works together as a cohesive whole here. So first, I just start with uh, kind of playing through the melody. chose uh, to make kind of my first target there. I feel like that that could use a little of that crunch, you know, that we enjoy. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle that as, uh, as one point there where we're going to be kind of targeting. And then, let's see, that just repeats. So anytime a phrase repeats when you're doing a reharm, you want to think about how you can maybe make it a little bit different the second time. So... So let's, let's make that uh, F there our next target, and then I thought there too, that C, that kind of hum, that's the high point of that phrase, let's make that another target. So we've already, already got three targets. Okay. Now then, let's, let's save the kind of refrain uh, for the end. Let's just do that much first. So then I just kind of sat and played around with this and thought, okay, what can I do uh, there? What do I want? C chord. That's kind of like what you find in the standard um, uh, harmonization. So I don't want that. Uh, it could be the one of a G chord. No, that, that, that doesn't really work, right? So what else can it be? Uh, it could be the three of an E minor. No, what about E major? E flat major? sure that I liked that sound of the E flat on the root. So how else could we work in? I, I mean, I like that sound. So then my thought process was, uh, thought process was, all right, I like the sound of an E flat in there, but I don't like that as the root. So what can I do that has both an E flat and a G, but that's not E flat major? And I thought, well, that G could also be the nine of an F chord. Huh? That's kind of fun, isn't it? So... Which is then going to actually modulate us and resolve into a B flat 
other. So I've got something that I like. I want that to be an F9 on this G here, okay? Which is functioning to modulate its now B flat here. And I, I did this little suspension on that, the, the two. So we've got one thing going on, but since we're in the key of F, just, you know, it's not really good enough. We need something else to lead us to that. So remember how I said we have to work backwards from our target. This is our target. But what can lead to F? First thing I think is the dominant. In this case, it's not really a secondary dominant necessarily. We could use C, right? Wow, that E flat seems to come out of nowhere. So I thought, oh. What if I used a C minor instead of C major? Because C minor has the E flat in it. So a C minor 7 there. Uh, right? Because really we're building up this, this uh, modulation into B flat for a very short period of time. So, okay, so that works. So now we've got a C minor here. And then, okay, we've got a kind of a neat, uh, oh, it's really a C minor 7. Um, a neat little thing going on there, uh, but I wanted to create kind of some excitement that led to that. One method I often use, uh, you've probably heard it in multiple of my hymn rearms, is this uh, pedal point on the five. So I'm starting with a C, because we're in key of F, so I'm starting with a C in the pedal. C in the bass and play kind of a standard harmonization. We can do this. Okay, so this is an F over an A, so first inversion F. Now, all I do, all I'm really going to do here is raise the C natural to a C sharp. I can even leave F in there um, as the kind of augmented five. So you can leave all of your voicing for that first inversion F, except raise the C to C sharp. And again, I, you, know, you can lock that up. A, B, C sharp. And then we land on that D minor that I wanted to there, okay? Now, what do we go from there? 
next target was kind of this C up here. And I thought, okay, let's kind of play like we did with that F, first inversion F that went into the A7. Let's stay on the D minor. Still wanted to land on a C here, okay, on the, on the dominant, the primary dominant of the, of the key. Um, and so you could do a number of things to get to that C, but I really like the kind of crunchiness of using a D7 over that note. So I just said, well, I walked it up again. A lot of, a lot of walking bass lines in this. Now before we get into the uh, kind of the refrain bit here, let's just play through what we've got so far, okay? So we start on the pedal point with the 5, the C in the pedal. some sort of big resolution at the end. Uh, but over that, um, it's, it's important to back up here and note that I made, I made a decision, I wanted to introduce this hymn with a little fanfare. And all I did for that was um, I just used a trumpet and I just did uh, went back and forth between the one chord, F, and the um, minor seven chord, E flat major, right? So I just played... But I thought, okay, hey, I could take that idea of going back and forth between E flat and F and use that in the refrain. Because it starts on a G, which is, that's an E flat. Yeah, it's the third, the third, a G is not an E flat. The G is a third of an E flat part, right? So. Flat, but I think I just decided to, to play a B flat chord over that. And that's kind of a standard thing that, that a lot of people do, um, even in kind of standard arrangements of this, is they'll, they'll use the first inversion A7 over that last G there to lead to D minor to kind of set up a final repetition. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Um, but I want to hold this pedal point, so everything here is over a C, and then it's just going back and forth the whole way through between F major and E flat major, with one exception, and that's right here where I play the B flat. Still over the C, the C gets held the whole way through. Um, so let's see, it starts on E flat, goes to an F, E flat, F, <laughs> E flat. Part of this that was most fun for me, honestly. 
lastly is this very last phrase. And basically, I had chosen a, um, a target a target note here, which is this C in the middle of it. Da, 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 da. chose to, uh, the same kind of thing I did earlier, but this is a bigger point, I decided to make that the dominant 7 of a D chord. So I wanted this to be a D7 here, okay? And then I, I, again, I said, okay, how do I get there? So, well, I use the secondary dominant, so kind of penciling things in for a minute, okay, if this is an A7, to leave the D7. And of course, it's really an A7 flat 9, I mean, I'm not going to write all that stuff out, but you know, those kind of chord alterations are going to be common in these reharms where you'll build up the 9s, 11s, 13s, and you'll use them in their flat or sharp or natural form depending on the chord, just to kind of fill things up. But I thought, okay, that works, and in fact I can do the walking bass line up to it, right? A, B, C sharp, D, A, F, full, so I can do A over B over C sharp over D, and I thought, okay, well how am I going to get to A? Uh, let's see. I like this idea of upward motion at the end here. It's like lifting everybody right up to, to God in this last verse, the contemplation of God. Thought, well, what if we if we start on a C, can I walk it all the way up? It's too far, what can I add in the middle? Aha, so that works. So my bass line goes C, D. going forever. So after the D, just walk that up. Let me just, uh, just throw that in the ground. Alright, we're moving back to Sharpie. So D over E over F sharp, which led to a G minor 7 uh, over that D there. Because D is the 5 of G minor, right? So G minor over A, and now G major 7 over B. C7 uh, flat 9, 
And then I just did a little tritone substitution at the end, so F, basically F sharp 7 um, to F major. Okay, so F sharp to F. And that's really it, okay? But the cool thing is how that bass line goes. to you and just kind of looking through my own process for reharmonizing him like that. Um, I'll probably do some other reharm videos in the future to take a look at those. Um, like I said, I'm not necessarily looking to do like a, a super theory oriented video, you know, like trying to come up with a formula for, for doing a reharm. Um, I don't really like that. I like to see it as kind of more of an improvisational experimental sort of thing. Uh, so anyway, if you liked this video, give it a like, uh, subscribe, and let me know in the comments um, if you'd like to see more hymn reharmonizations kind of uh, picked apart like this. In the meantime, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chant Talk.